Hi, it's still me, Victor Gaon from Confluent, and welcome, welcome to the second episode of my three-part series streaming on Kubernetes. It doesn't have to be hard way. In the first episode, you learn about the building blocks, basic building blocks that we're going to be using to, to run uh, things like Kafka and uh, the Confluent uh, platform on Kubernetes. And Kubernetes comes with the variety of different policies for managing your workloads. However, there's a cases where it's not enough. I will give you example about uh, rolling restarts. When you're restarting things in the stateful set, you want to increase number of replicas or you're changing the version of your image. For Kubernetes, all these pods are like a herd of livestock and they're all the same which is not very applicable ways how you can do things with Kafka because some of the brokers, especially one broker, is more important than others. And this broker has a special name, a controller. Controller maintains some of the uh, metadata for Kafka cluster. It maintains a uh, list of partitions, it uh, maintains a list of leaders, and is responsible for electing new leaders for new partition. So this guy is pretty important. And what we usually tell our customers that when you're performing roll on your start or you're performing roll on grade, this guy needs to go last. And there's a special API that allows to figure out which broker is actually controller. So when you're performing operations like roll and restarts, you know how to kill the controller last. Rolling restarts, rolling upgrades, and other maintenance tasks are things that require you to have a, some sort of specialist there. It might be consultant or any seasoned uh, Kafka uh, system administrator or site reliability engineer. But now we're running these things in the cloud native fashion and we need to bring this knowledge from all these people to the brains of this heartless machine, to this Kubernetes cluster. And this is where we enter in realm of Confluent operator. All right, now let me quickly walk you through the, the, the things that are happening inside your Kubernetes cluster every time when you're submitting this uh, specification or like this manifest of your Kafka cluster deployment. What you can see right now on the screen is the uh, diagram of different components that will exist in your Kubernetes cluster. Using kubectl CLI or using some external client like a Helm charts and things like that, we perform API call to Kubernetes server to create certain resources. Now, we, for example, want to provision a Kafka cluster. So in this case, we're submitting a Kafka resource. There's a special type of pod that runs inside your Kubernetes. This pod will contain this application logic. So if something is happening with this Kafka resource or, or Zookeeper resource, this pod includes certain logic to perform uh, operations on the Kafka resource or Zookeeper resource and we'll take in care of um, handling all these requests. So remember when I was talking about things that Kubernetes make things happen, um, same logic is applicable for custom code. My code can listen certain events that happen with certain resources. Say I want to update this resource. I want to scale my Kafka cluster from three nodes to four nodes. So this code will be responsible for materializing this specification into actual uh, components that will run inside the Kubernetes. There's uh, two types of these pods. One pod will be responsible handling requests against Kafka resources and Zookeeper resources, and there another port will be responsible for handling requests for this physical stateful cluster resource. That will include provisioning of stateful sets, uh, configuration maps, provisioning services, so this port will be addressable from other applications. We also provision the secrets where we're storing your passwords and your um, the certificates and the keys if you enable uh, some of the security configuration. Plus, we're taking care of provisioning disks. So from this diagram, you'll see there are a lot of things going on uh, on the operator side of things and how operator handles certain requests and making things happen in the world of Kubernetes. So Confluent Operator allows you to deploy Confluent Platform as a whole. You just do one more click and uh, your whole platform will deploy. But also you can deploy each individual component. You can deploy brokers, you can deploy connect cluster, you can deploy key SQL clusters, um, replicator, and what have you. The current state of uh, Kubernetes uh, ecosystem reminds me state of Linux uh, ecosystem maybe uh, 15, 20 years ago when there were 
many different vendors who provide um, the, their version of Linux operating system that includes some of the basic Linux functionalities, but also including some of the sweet features that will be appealing for the different uh, variety of the people. Now, that would be the choose between those would be incredibly difficult task for today's uh, system administrators or SREs who are trying to implement Kubernetes in their organization. So don't be despair. We got you covered with Confluent Operator. So first of all, we tested uh, Confluent Operator with three major providers of Kubernetes as a service. We tested this with Amazon EKS, we tested with uh, GCP GKE, we tested with Azure. If you're in the business of running your own Kubernetes cluster in your own data center, you also have that luxury. Uh, providers like a Pivotal or a Red Hat that provides a PKS and the OpenShift deployment that allows you to deploy Kubernetes functionality in your own data centers. And we also standardize and certify on those platforms. Uh, Confluent operator allows you to automate key lifecycle operations uh, that you usually do with your Kafka cluster. Um, that will include rolling upgrades and elastic scalability. So using operator, you can easily automate key lifecycle operations that involve uh, your Kafka cluster that might include rolling upgrades that will include uh, elastic scalability of a cluster. With Confluent Operator, you can go from the one Kafka broker node to the hundreds of Kafka nodes in a matter of minutes. And finally, Confluent Operator allows you to run Kafka clusters in your organization with confidence without having a PhD in Kafka administration. Confluent Operator is a custom resource controller that runs inside your Kubernetes cluster and will be responsible for handling requests against custom resources, namely Kafka cluster, Zookeeper cluster, and things what we call physical stateful cluster that will be materialized as a, one of the things like a Connect cluster or maybe a, a KSQL cluster or maybe a Replicator cluster. The simplest way to start with this is you go to uh, confluent.io slash downloads website and getting this package uh, from uh, Confluent Operator that will include uh, things uh, that we call uh, Helm charts. And you learn about Helm, that Helm is used to deploy uh, package software uh, to Kubernetes. And this is what we use also to provision our operator and operator component. In order to deploy your Kafka cluster, you need to provide a um, YAML file definition that will have a section about Kafka cluster, that will have a number of nodes that you want to have in your cluster, some of the resources that needs to be allocated in the cluster, and if you need to provide some additional configuration information for your uh, Kafka cluster, you can do that in this uh, custom resource definition where we have information about uh, replicas, where we have information about uh, security configuration, or if we need to have external access, external to Kubernetes. Securing your Kafka cluster is a very important topic for many customers of ours, so that's why we put a lot of attention to this topic and automating some of the tasks that for some reason becoming very con uh, confusing for many, many people. So by default, uh, operator uh, deploys Kafka cluster with uh, SASL play enabled, meaning that you cannot access this cluster without providing username and password. Though you also can configure this cluster in a matter of changing configuration that enables uh, TLS-based access uh, and also SASL TLS. There are some tasks that are super labor-intensive and error-prone, and these tasks usually involve things when you need to change your keys configuration or update your certificates on your Kafka cluster workers. This is something where the things can go south. We automated this task and banked in in operators, so this task will not take your time anymore. Make application a cloud natives in many cases also mean that your application needs to be able to accommodate requirements of your business in elastic fashion. If you see growth of your application usage and growth of the um, different number of messages that comes from your Kafka cluster, your infrastructure needs to be able to accommodate this. And the Confluent operator provides the means how you can do this safely and without uh, having a headache and understanding all the bits and bytes. Uh, the Confluent operator will be uh, responsible for checking um, if the replication is performing well, if a controller is alive. So all these things will be handled by operator. And you can safely uh, scale your Kafka cluster um, up to the point where it will meet demands of your application and business. 
So let me quickly walk you through small procedure that called a rolling restart. So this procedure usually involves certain steps performed in a certain order in order to things happen. So we need to shut down the broker that we want to perform some maintenance. Like we can do upgrade of configuration, certain parameters require broker restart. Some, some of the parameters they're not, or maybe you're just doing upgrade of your software. Now you need to wait until uh, all these brokers will catch up with the replication. So your broker will be in a safe state. Next, you are restarting the new broker with uh, updated configuration or updated uh, uh, software. You're waiting until the number of under-replicated partitions will go down. As you may remember, we still think this is the most important metric to look after, under-replicated partitions. And after that, you can continue the same process. As you can see, this process is not like a rocket science, to, but it requires consistent set of steps and certain metrics to be monitored in order to perform this correctly without losing your data. And this process actually will be automated using Confluent Operator. So in this case, this task of upgrading certain information or updating some of the configuration or even updating software will be very routine task for you. So there is one technique that's very important for the modern day enterprises. That's technique called uh, infrastructure as a code. And uh, using Confluent Operator and deployment of your Confluent platform using Confluent Operator actually enforces you to use this technique. You have this uh, declaration of your uh, Confluent platform cluster um, that you can put in your version control. You always know what kind of uh, software you're running in your production so you can safely do upgrades, restarts, or even rollbacks if something is not quite right and you don't like the result of this one. So you can deploy these kind of things with confidence and you can go and sleep well at night. All right, now you have it. And as you saw, there were a lot of things going on there, but I didn't have uh, much time on doing anything myself because a uh, Confluent Operator was able to perform this complex task for me. That's it of my part two of three-part series uh, streaming on Kubernetes. It doesn't have the hard way. My name is Viktor Gamov, and as always, have a nice day. Mm -hmm.